and in this case uh, it was with respect to resignation of the managing director the case law basically says that you know a, an ordinary director can resign merely by giving a resignation letter but in the case of md that is the managing director or whole time directors such resignation cannot be merely by giving a letter that resignation should be in writing that resignation should be formal and that resignation should be formally accepted by the board so without accepting such resignation the md uh, cannot relieve from his duties so this case is basically with much emphasis is on the mode of resignation the law simply says that ordinary directors can resign merely by giving letter but md's resignation should be formal and it should be discussed in the board and should be accepted by the board and not only that he should be relieved formally by the board this case uh, tarlok chand kanav vs rajkumar kapoor deals with you know removal of directors which can be applicable under section 169 of the company act 2013 new syllabus the case basically pertains to removal of directors the case law mentions that you know except those category of directors which are stated as non removable under the present 169 or the earlier law that is the directors appointed by the tribunal and the directors appointed under the proportional representation route except these two category of directors any directors can be removed by the shareholders by passing an ordinary resolution with a special notice the case law emphasizes that even though directors who are stated as permanent directors in the articles of association can be removed by shareholders i'll repeat again except those directors who are mentioned as non removable under the law that is the present law is section 169 of companies act 2013 except these two categories of directors which are stated as non removable under the companies act any other director can be removed by the shareholders not only that even directors who are mentioned as not removable and stated as permanent directors in the articles of association can be removed by the shareholders by the provisions which is been empowered under 116 of the company act 2013 the case law gives predominance to the shareholders power to remove the directors i conclude that except those directors which are specifically stated in the company act as not removable any other directors can be removed by the shareholders even though such directors who are named as or designated as permanent directors in the articles of association and even specifically stated as non removable can be removed by the shareholders by passing an ordinary resolution with special notice in an extraordinary general meeting is applicable in the area removal of directors under 169 of the present companies act 2013 the law which prescribes or the case law which says the limitation of the civil court to entertain a petition for removal of directors as you all know that the provisions relating to removal of directors and the procedure for removal of directors is been clearly and expressly stated in the companies act there will be no remedy which we will get from a civil court the civil courts have no jurisdiction or will not entertain petitions with respect to removal of directors because remove the provisions for removal is clearly stated in the company act the procedures is stated in the company act you all know that there should be a shareholders resolution that is an ordinary resolution that should be at an extraordinary general meeting with a special notice since the company act the parent law itself specifically says about the provisions and procedures for removal of directors civil courts will not entertain petition for removal of directors and basically the civil courts will not enter into the internal affairs of the company also so this case is a very important case with respect to removal of directors for removing directors you the shareholders need not or the stakeholders need not want to move to the or go to the civil courts because civil courts will not entertain such petitions 
why because how to remove director now what are the procedures to remove director is clearly and expressly stated in the companies act so the remedy is already in the act so the court will not interfere in the in the internal affairs of the company and powers of directors for ca final a law paper this this uh, case can be applied in section 179 which speaks about the general powers of the board uh, and duties of course uh, in this case law what happened and um, the, the the way how it was dealt with the powers was you know you know that the usual principle of directors is the directors has been empowered to exercise all the powers of the board all the powers of the company except those has been reserved for shareholders by the companies act so except those powers reserved for the companies act reserved by the companies act for the shareholders all powers can be exercised by the board in general now the question arises whether there is any limitation for such powers this case law hannibal versus frost is a celebrated case which has clearly Uh, stating that the directors have been empowered to exercise the powers of the company but that should be for legitimate purpose that should be for the good faith of the company and that should be for the benefit of the company and the directors have no power or has not been empowered to do any or exercise any powers for any illegitimate purposes or illegal purposes like paying bribes on behalf of the company like doing some illegal activities on behalf of the company if the directors do so such illegal activities then the company and the shareholders will not be bound by the same so this case law is a very important case law when it comes to the powers and duties of director which clearly puts a restriction on the powers of the board or the director stating that they can do power they can exercise the powers of the company for the best interest of the company in the good faith of the company and they should not exercise such powers for illegal purposes like paying bribes even though the company has benefited and is concerned with respect to the jurisprudence of company law is concerned this case law can be applied by ca fine students in many chapters um, wherever you know wherever jurisprudence is questioned and any questions relating to the powers of the board any questions relating to the minor rights any questions related to major rights is coming into this very important case law and it is been specifically applicable to the operation and mismanagement chapter of your syllabus and this case law is uh, basically uh, you know upholds the law relating to the majority rule whatever decisions the company takes is run by the majority that is the edifice of the company jurisprudence always the will of the majority will apply over the right of the minority shareholders but at the same time minority shareholders will also get some also preserving rights when it comes to ultraviolet activities wrongdoers in control fraudulent activities oppression and mismanagement is there so this case law basically says that always the rule or the you know you know the power of the wishes of the majority will prevail over the wishes of the minority of course but at the same time minority shareholders has also their own remedies specifically into the company's jurisprudence and also another thing which has been stated in force versus harbottle is the court will not usually interfere in the inter internal affairs of the company the internal management of the company is best with the majority and best with the directors of the company So Force vs Harbottle is one of the cardinal and edifice case law which specifically says that the decision of the majority is always will always prevail over the right you know wishes of the minority shareholders with some exceptions which is stated in the case law itself friends this force vs Har harbottle has been widely used whenever the, there is a dispute between the minority vis-a-vis -vis the majority shareholder is concerned and in india Uh, raj mundri electric supply company limited corporation limited case law uh, that is raj mundri electric supply corporation versus a nagesh rao in 1955 has also been have some reference with respect to the interference of the court into the internal affairs of the company 
and with specific reference to some you know minority rights is concerned so all together this case laws can be used in your operation and mismanagement chapter i'll repeat again the crux of force versus harbor deal is point number 1 always the rights of the majority or the wishes of the majority will prevail over the wishes of the minority point number 2 the court will not interfere into the internal affairs of the company the internal affairs is vest with the directors or the majority shareholders of the company even though the three even though there is an issue there is some question of you know rights violation is concerned the perfect person to 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 file a petition is the majority shareholders so i i will i will explain once again the whole concept of forces harbor in one line always the wishes of the majority shareholders will prevail over the minority shareholders except in the case of ultraviolence activities except where the wrong do is in control except in the case of fraud and except where there is oppression and mismanagement happening in the company